Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray that y'all blessed today. That y'all still dug deep in prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That you're rooted and grounded in that word. Hallelujah. Jesus said that man can't live on bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. Hallelujah. That word is our spiritual food. It's how we bring nourishment to our spiritual life. Hallelujah. Just like you got a physical life, you have a spiritual life. If you starve your physical life, your physical life's going to begin to die out. Your body begins to break down. Same thing in your spiritual life. You have to feed your spiritual life or your spiritual life will begin to die out and break down. Hallelujah. And the way we feed our spiritual life is we have to get into the word of God. This has to be something that's mandatory in our lives if we belong to Christ. If we are walking a life with God, and we expect to be victorious, to grow, to produce growth. We must constantly always be in the Word. Getting that, that nourishment that comes from the words of Jesus Christ. From the presence of the Lord. The Bible says all of this Word is God bread. It's inspired by God. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. He said, it's the, the spirit. The spirit gives life. The flesh profits nothing. So when we get into the word of God, it's a way that we draw on the spirit of God. It's a way that we absorb his presence. We draw close to him. We get built up strong in the spirit of God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I believe that God shows us in the book of Ephesians that there is a point where God is bringing us to where he wants to bring us to the fullness of the statue of Christ. And when you look in the book of Ephesians, you can see that there are actual different levels of the Spirit of God that we can grow into. This is where God is bringing us to. Of course, we are not given the fullness of the Spirit. If that was the case, I mean, we would be completely trained, changed and transformed. There would be no point in the Scripture, chapter 12, where it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So as we get into the Word... We allow it to renew our minds, which results in a transformation where people can see the reflection of the work of God in our life. They see the change. They see the transformation. And in that, God is proven as a reality. His word is proven a truth. It's real. It has changed us. We're not the same no more. Hallelujah. We don't talk the same no more. We don't think the same no more. Hallelujah. We don't like the same things we used to like anymore. Hallelujah. Our relationship with sin changes. Whereas before we come to Christ, we in love with sin. We like sin. We indulge in the lust of the flesh. But as we surrender to God, we give our life to Christ our relationship with sin changes. We begin to fall in love with Jesus. And in that, we start to fall out of love with that sin we was so much in love with at one time. We don't like it no more. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I, I believe that's where that scripture comes in. When 2 Corinthians 5.17, anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. There is a newness of life that begins to manifest in our life. We become a new creation. We born again by the Spirit of God. God begins to operate in our life. He does something to us on the inside. He touches us on the inside and now He makes it possible 
for a transformation to be brought about in our life because we have been born again. God has touched us on the inside. Now when we get into the word of God, there's a transformation that begins to come about as we begin to renew our minds. Hallelujah. God begins to build within us a Christ-like character. Hallelujah. And it comes through us getting into the Word of God. It comes through us spending time in prayer. Hallelujah. It's a relationship with God. And anybody knows that when you're in a relationship with people or a person, that person will influence your life. It doesn't matter who you get around. People influence people, and that's a principle in Scripture. In 1 Corinthians 15.33, says, Do not be deceived. Bad companions make a good person bad. So God's saying, look, people influence people. And just like people influence people, God also influences people. And when you begin to spend time with God, you spend time in his word, you spend time in prayer, you spend time meditating and thinking on the testimonies of God. You spend time praising him and admiring him and just thanking him all the time. You keep your mindset on Christ. God begins to change you. He begins to influence you. It's like you absorb the presence of God and he begins to change you into the image and likeness of his son, Jesus. It's like we are created like a sponge. And the more we sit in the word, the more we get into prayer, the more we begin to worship God. It's like we soak up the presence of Christ. And there's a transformation that takes place. There's a real change, a tangible change. People can see the reflection of that transformation in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God wants to influence our lives, but we have to be willing to spend time with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's a good God. He's an awesome God. And... I believe that we all need them times of personal revival with Christ. We need to always renew that fire in our heart because the fire seems to want to go out and we have to keep that fire burning. And if you don't keep the fire burning in your heart, that passion for God, where you're seeking after him, you want more and more and more of Christ, what happens is the fire goes out, and then as people, when the fire of God goes out, people tend to go back to the things of the world. Hallelujah, because it's the fire of God that sustains you. It's that revelation that restrains you from turning away from obedience to Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says that without vision, my people perish. Where there's no revelation, my people, they cast off restraint. So when you start to lose that revelation, you lose the fire of God. You, you ain't been spending time in the Word. You ain't been chasing after Christ in prayer and that fire begin, begins to go out, you lose the revelation. And in that, that what was restraining you from going back into the things of the world, you start to lose that restraint. Why? Because you lose the revelation. And in reality, it's the revelation of God, the reality, the fire, that passion burning on the inside of you that restrains you. It's the restraining factor. And that's why it says where there is no revelation my people cast off restraint. See, when you start to lose the revelation of God, you start to lose the fire. That's what that revelation is. It's the fire of God. And when you lose it, you cast off restraint. You fall into temptation. You turn back into some things that God has already delivered you from because you lost the revelation. You haven't been spending time in prayer. You haven't been spending time in the Word of God. 
And I believe that we as people, we need that personal revival time with Christ where we are spending time chasing after him, wanting more and more of Jesus, wanting to grow, wanting to change, wanting to experience the presence of God, wanting more, not just having an ordinary religious Christian life like you see most of these people having. I don't want that stuff. I want to experience God. I want God to use me. And in order for that to happen, I have to be in a constant pursuit chasing after Christ. I have to chase after Him in the Word. I have to chase after Him in prayer. And if we're going to want this and want to be used by God, this is what we are going to have to do. We are going to have to be diligent. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please God, and those who come to Him must know that He is, and that He is a rewarder for those who diligently seek Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We want the fire. We want the anointing. We want to be used by God. But we got to be willing to pay the price. And that price is pursuit. The proof of passion is how much you pursuing whatever it is that you're passionate about. And if we want to be passionate for Christ and we want that passion to inflame our hearts, we got to be willing to pursue him in the word of God so that he can inflame our hearts with a fire, that we have a fire burning on the inside of us for souls. That when we get around people, we don't have to try to do anything the love of God in our hearts begin to move us there's there's this compelling move of God in our hearts that moves us to step out in faith and begin to speak to people hallelujah we begin to sense the presence of God when he's wanting us to do something why because we've been spending time with the Lord we've been spending time in the word we've been spending time in prayer We've been spending time in worship and there's a revival in our hearts. There's a constant refreshing that is coming from the presence of the Lord. Remember what the Bible says in Acts chapter 3 verse 19. It says, repent and be converted so that your sins may be blotted out and times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So these times of refreshing are different seasons where the Holy Spirit begins to bring revival to our hearts. He refreshes our hearts as we begin to pursue him, living out a lifestyle of repentance, constantly pressing in to the word, constantly pressing into prayer, constantly pressing in to a place of worship where we are praising him and lifting up his name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Father, I want you. I, I don't want my will. This is the attitude God is looking for. Not our will, but God's will. Remember when Jesus, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was going through all the pressure. He knew he was about to be crucified and he was praying and he was in a wrestling match. And he said, Father, if you can take this cup of suffering from me. And he wrestled and he said, but nevertheless, not my will but your will. I'm willing to offer myself as a sacrifice, Lord. Not, not, not what I want, but what you want. And this is the attitude God wants to see in our lives. I don't care what, what this life has to offer. I don't care what, what, what job offering comes here or what job offering comes here. If it comes between me and God and it's not his will, I don't want it. I want Christ. I want God's will. I want his will for my life. God, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. This is the attitude that we need to catch on to and not let the things of this world distract us where we get lukewarm. We lose our fire. We lose that time of revival and refreshing that God wants to bring to our life. But it's only going to come as we are in constant pursuit of Christ. Hallelujah. Do we want the deeper things of God, brothers and sisters? Do we want to be used by the Lord? Do we want to see God use us when we pray and people get healed of sickness? People get converted on the spot. The power of God begins to touch people when we come into the room and we begin to pray. If we are longing for this, we have to press in. We have to be willing to seek God. We, we can't be content we're living a mediocre Christian life. We got to want more. 
Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Oh, God, give us a hunger and a thirst for righteousness that we would be filled with more and more of your presence, your fire, so that you can use us for the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hallelujah. You ever seen somebody that is hungry and thirsty? They desperate. And this is what God's saying. I want you to come after me with desperation. I want you to want this thing. I want you to come and be willing to put your food to the side. Be willing to buffet your appetite and die to yourself. Put the plate aside and spend some time in fasting and praying. And be desperate with seeking me. And God says, I'm going to pour my spirit into your life. I'm going to put a fire. I'm going to refreshing you on the inside. I'm going to give you that refreshing that you are longing to experience but I need you to come to me with desperation I need you to stir up a hunger I need you to get thirsty for what I'm willing to give you because I am willing this is what God's saying I'm willing all I need my people to do is come and pursue me because God is willing hallelujah I pray that the Lord stirs up a fresh hunger in our hearts for, for the greater things of Christ. Jesus said that the greater things we would do because he went to the Father. Greater works. And this is what we want to do. We want to walk in a greater walk with Christ, a greater love, a greater intimacy where God can do the greater works through our life because we're so connected to Christ in prayer. we so connected to Christ in the Word. we so devoted. we chasing after Him. And there, there's a fire burning in our hearts. Hallelujah. And it doesn't go out. Remember when Moses... Moses saw that bush and it was on fire. That bush was on fire and that fire that was burning in that bush, it didn't go out, Moses said. That's what we want. We want a fire that's ever burning inside of our hearts and it never goes out, oh God. Light up our hearts with the fire of God. Oh Jesus, this is what we're longing for. Hallelujah. This is what we wanting in our life. I mean, if we are, we are Christians, we, we should be wanting this. We should be desiring this. But it takes us to have a willingness to pursue Him. Hallelujah. To put down the things of the world and say, God, I want you. God, I'm coming after you. I want the fire. I want revival. I want to be refreshed in my heart, in my life. I want to be used to benefit other people. I want to display the love of Jesus to those around me. I want people to see the joy of the Lord when I come around, that my smile would be contagious. Hallelujah. That the kindness that I show towards people, it would grip their hearts and they would, it would draw them into a place of surrender that where they would submit to Jesus in humble repentance. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Spirit would begin to be produced so strong in our lives that it would begin to affect all those that we get around. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Lamb of God. The devil didn't like this video. He got somebody to go crank up a lawnmower. But praise God, hallelujah. Take this word and run with it, brothers and sisters. Take this word and run f with it. Don't be content with just being living a, a mediocre Christian life. Go for the fire. Say, Lord, I want more of you. I want to wrestle with you, God, until I get what I want. Like in the Old Testament, when Jacob wrestled with the angel, he wrestled with the angel and he says, I will not let you go until you bless me. And this is the attitude that we need to have. We need to grab hold of the word. Grab hold of prayer and get in that secret place and say, Lord, I am not going to let you go. I am not going to stop seeking you until you bless me. Hallelujah. And we will see God do some amazing things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I just pray that y'all blessed today and that y'all Keep fighting that good fight of fate and waging a good warfare. Keep pressing in. Go for the fire. Go for a deeper anointing. Go for a deeper love with Christ. Tell God you want more of Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that we can do 
all that Christ has called us to do. Hallelujah. That our ministry would flow out of our intimacy with Christ. So glory be to the Lamb of God. I pray that y'all bless today and that y'all keep fighting the good fight of faith and waging a good warfare in Jesus' mighty name.